Hi, I'm Ken. Over the years I've put lots of videos on YouTube, over a hundred. Some are, uh, in fact most of them are on short stories I wrote for my great grandchildren. But there are other ones on, uh, even some on cooking. But most of them get very few views. Uh, but one of them I did about three or four years ago got quite a lot of views, over 40,000 I think. And I was surprised. It was really just a, a thing I'd made for helping with addition and subtraction. It looked something like this, a counting ring. And people seemed interested. But I thought recently, what good is it if they haven't got a counting ring to do exercises? So I decided to, uh, to make a counting ring. And this video is exactly that. How do you make this counting ring? Now, it's not a difficult video. There's no maths involved. A very simple construction, which I think would interest youngsters. If they made it, they could say, I made this and show how it works. So here we go. How to make a counting ring. Well, you can see from here, we, we don't need much for this uh, exercise. Uh, some white card. You can either buy some or you can take a cardboard box from the cereals and use that. A uh, pair of compasses, any old compasses you can see there, they aren't very good. A straight edge, any straight edge will do, as long as it's straight. Some press studs or a large press stud and, and maybe some glue. So those are the bits we need to do this exercise. Well, I've just got an ordinary piece of uh, printer paper I'm going to use to start with. And compasses. Just draw a circle. A reasonable sized circle. It doesn't have to be any sort of measurement. Now we need to divide this circle into sections. So first of all, we need to put a line through the centre using the straight edge. Again, any sort of straight edge will do. A line through the centre to that end there, okay? So now we have the circle in two parts. If we want to make some more, using this end of the line here, just put an arc the top here like so. This end of the line, another arc, like so. And that's the arc, the top, can you see the arc there? So we need to join that section to the middle and go through the circle. So we do that by that and now we have four sectors. The next thing to do is to divide these into two. So by doing that we need to get the compasses go to this end of the arc here with my compasses right way around and draw an arc Go to this end, this end, and draw another arc. So I have a arc there, just at the top as you can see, just there. And we'll go through the circle again to the centre of the circle. From that intersection through the centre of the circle, like so. And you see we have a, a smaller section now. Do the same for this. We could do the same next arc, but it's probably easier to get your compasses at get your compasses at this end and measure the distance across to this arc here. So I'll just do that. Do 
This is the easy way to do it. So I'm going to measure that distance there and then just go down the circle and put a mark there on the circle and join the dots to the centre again. Now we have eight sectors or eight bits. So I'll do the same for uh, one of these. I'll find the midpoint first of all, same way I did last time, an arc, an arc, where they cross, go through the centre of the circle. And like so. So that's dividing into two. Now again, go from there to the measure that distance of your compasses and go around the circle. Just as we did before. Line there. One there. And one there. You see, you probably I'll just put a little dot there to show you where the intersection is. One there. There. One there. So we'll go through the same center again as we did before. One. Two. Three. Now you can see we've got 16 sectors. They could keep going, make 32. The, the only problem is the more you make, you get errors creeping in. Uh, measuring with a compass isn't perfect, so you have to be more careful. I think 16 is, is probably okay. The next thing to do is to draw some more circles. So from the centre of here, we'll draw a circle here for the outer ring. Another circle for the inner ring. And now we can put some numbers in. Let's start with uh, zero. There and one. One, two, two, and so on.
So there we are, we've numbered the uh, circles all the way around. Now you have to repeat this again for another, just like this. And that's quite difficult. Now what I've done, I've cheated a bit and I have uh, made a photocopy. So I'm going to make a photocopy now of this and then come back and we'll go on a bit further. Well, I think see, I've photocopied one here. Uh, it, you, otherwise you've got to draw it all out again. If you haven't got a photocopier at home, perhaps your, your friend may have one. You can even go down to a shop and have it photocopied. It's easier than drawing it again. So now we need to uh, put these onto some card. Now the card I had before was no good. So I've got some from an old Amazon box really. So I need to stick these on there first of all. One, you might wonder why we need two copies, but you'll soon see why. Just get these, it's not critical that, that bit. So, if we get some glue. This one first of all. Make sure it's nice and flat. Then this one. down again so it's nice and flat and what we need to do now is to cut out the circles we have two circles here First of all, on one of them we have to take the outside circle. So we'll take the outside circle here and cut it out. This takes a, well, it's not critical. I like it looks round. You can be very careful if you want to and make sure it's perfectly round. That's the outer circle. Now this one we have to do the inner circle so we need to cut into the inner circle one 
like so. tricky so there now for rubbish now we have our two circles an outer circle add on in a circle. We have to somehow fasten these together through the middle. Now a large prestard might do it, but it would have to be a very large prestard. Make sure the holes are the same. Now one of my uh, discs, I use a small nut and bolt to fasten them together. Uh, you need to find somewhere to fasten them together. But I've used a, a small nut and bolt, make the holes a bit bigger. Like so. Make sure ends are clean at the back. And I'll show you this one. I put this one together with a, a nut and a, a bolt and nut at the back. You, you, anything you like. Uh, Prestors are better, but I'm not sure a Prestors will go through both of these together. Let's just try this nut and bolt for the time being. I bought this one from here. It doesn't want to come off. Nope. I'm afraid it's taking some time getting this off. That's too tight, I can't get the nut off there. But so, just to give you an idea, I have an idea. What I've done, I've uh, used the press stud, but it's not big enough because I can't get the top bit on. So you need a bigger press stud to go through there, or a nut and bolt. But uh, there's the ring, how does, how does it work? Well, first of all, on the zeros there, I've got a small arrow. Say so what I add, add two to something. So start with bring the arrow to two. First of all, like that. On the inner ring. So the outer ring is on two. Looking on the inner ring at three, here, you get the outer ring is five. So two plus three equals five. We can do this for several. We can do uh, let's say five plus five equals ten. 
See, it's come off because it's not very secure, that. You need a, a bolt properly through there. Uh, how about uh, another one? Seven, add eight. So bring the arrow to seven there. there. Look at eight on the inside. And we get 15. Seven, add eight equals 15. We can go several more. I think we'll probably go, the biggest you go for is 10, add five, I think get to 15. But what about subtraction? Well, let's go to there. Now in subtraction, we'll just use the, the rings. So let's say uh, nine, take away three. So we'll put the nine and the three together, nine and three. And where is the arrow? The arrow is there, which is 6. So 9 take away the 3 is 6. Another one. Let's go to 14. Take away 6. Go to the arrow, which is 8. So 14 take away 6 is 8. So again, we can use this for addition and subtraction. So it's a quite a versatile little ring, and it's very easy to make. The only difficulty is getting something to go through the middle. Uh, I have used small nuts and bolts, but if you get a large press stud, that will probably do the job. And like I showed you before, this idea of making the rings is okay for everything. This one is made for animals, where the, uh, like a, a, in the middle you've got the alphabet, the beginning letter of the thing. So if you look at the dog, bring D round, you see it's D for dog, or Where's the frog gone? Here we are. F for frog. Another one. I did the same sort of thing. This is uh, exactly the same, except it's got the actual name inside. Horse, cat. So you can make all sorts of things with these. I've even made a, a code ring, which you can use for sending signals by code. So that's the making the, uh, the ring. I hope you find it interesting. I, I'm sure any youngsters would like to make this so they've made the ring themselves. But remember, the, probably the difficult bit is getting the uh, connector bit in the middle, a small bolt like uh, that one that's done it there, or a, a press stud. If you get a bigger press stud, if you get bigger ones than this, you need a bigger press stud because it's so thick, the card. And it won't actually press down, as you can see. Okay, So that's it. That's my uh, counting card. I hope you'll uh, be able to make it. At least you can do it and see how it works yourself, rather than looking at a video where I've shown people how it works. Well, thanks for watching, and uh, bye for now. Hi <laughs> there, well. The uh, video shows how anyone can make a coding ring. No special skills are required. Um, perhaps for children it gives them some experience in using the compasses, but that's about all really. If you're interested in the aesthetics uh, more than the actual uh, how it works, you could actually do this on a, a laptop. If you've got a laptop and a drawing program, you could make a nice uh, pretty one, but it would still do the same job. In the uh, last part of this video, I'm going to show you how it could be done on a laptop using, uh, in my case, Smart Notebook. A good drawing program will do the same. But I've used Smart Notebook because it's on my laptop. And you can download it free anyway. So I'm going to show you how you can make a really pretty one. But remember, it will only do the same job as the other one. And my own personal view is it's better for youngsters to use the hands to make it rather than use a computer. So I'm going to ring off now with this video of how to make the uh, disc on a smart notebook. Bye for now. This is uh, using a smart notebook to draw the ring. Any good 
drawing program will probably do the same. But I use Smart Notebook because it's on my laptop. You can download a, a free copy of Smart Notebook. It, it does have a watermark down here somewhere, but that probably won't bother you much. But how do you use Smart Notebook to produce the coding ring? Let's have a go. First of all, we go to Shapes. Pick a circle, and then draw the circle. Now, if you want to be really artistic, you can fill the circle. So you can go to Fill, pick a color, maybe yellow, and fill the circle. OK? You don't have to do that, but you can do if you want to. You can move the circle about. And then we need to divide the circle into 16. So if we click anywhere on the circle, go to there, go down to divide shape, and change that to, to 16. And now the circle is divided into 16. These are 16 separate parts. So to keep them together, we need to group the whole thing. Again, with that select, use mouse to highlight it. And you can see the different shapes there. Pick any one of them. And go down to group. Group. And now the whole thing is joined together. You see there, we can move it wherever we want. The next thing to do is to put some numbers in. Well, how do we put numbers in? First of all, we need to go to text and pick a side. Well, 26 is probably OK. So click on the page, start with 1, 2, 3, and so on. So there are the numbers, but we need to pull this into here. So we'll go to this select again, that, and now we can pick these up and put them wherever we want. Put the start there, shall we? One. So the numbers are all in there. Now we need another circle like this, but smaller. So the first thing to do is to group everything together by, again, highlighting the whole thing, picking any one of these, and grouping. Now it's all together. So now the circle will move as one circle. We need to copy this first of all, so we go to here and copy, go down the page a bit, oh, perhaps move this thing away first of all, down here and paste, it's too big, so make it a bit smaller now by going down to this one down here, just reduce the size, move probably. That might be okay, we can always try it in this anyway. 
So now we need to move this up here. Down here, join them together for that. A little bit tricky this bit, but it looks okay. So now we've got the ring. Uh, what we need to do now is again, again, join it all together by copying group, group, and that's our ring. So there's a one ring. We need to get two of those. So now again, we need to copy. Go down a bit. Down here and paste. She went out the way a bit. So now we have two rings. Like what did before. So we can print these out. Print. I'll get the two rings like we had before. It's a bit neater looking, but it's, uh, of course, you need a laptop or a computer, and you also need a drawing program. As I said, Smart Notebook is free, but it does have some limitations. Because I've got a Smart Notebook, it's easy for me, but maybe the doing by hand is better anyway, for especially for youngsters who will find probably more satisfaction in drawing it by hand. But there we are, that's another method of producing the coding ring.